Good evening and welcome. This is Sports Report. I'm Andy Michelle along with Matthew Hatfield and it is week three for most of the schools in Virginia. A lot of football action going on including a clash of two unbeatens. In the Peninsula District, we have the Hampton Crabbers taking on the Woodside Wolverines at John B. Todd Stadium. Woodside has won four of the past six meetings in this series, Andy, including two straight. The Crabbers trying to reverse the fortunes and stay unbeaten. Early going in the first quarter, it is Tayshawn Quinn looking, looking, and that's last one around the corner. He's going to take off with it. He's going to miss a few tacklers. He's going to go down the field and misses the pylon so he's in 62 yards and a quick start for Woodside six nothing over the Crabbers extra point that's no good but it bounces off the upright it's no good that's why it's only six to nothing Woodside Hampton going to try to come right back behind their high octane offense led by Javon Bubba Quillen this time he's handing it off to the running back Traquan Smith the junior he's in from three yards out and Hampton's on the board they don't try extra points at Hampton though Mike Smith says we go for two right now without a established kicker so it's deadlocked at six until Quillen darts up the middle 54 yards to Pater you're not going to get him the future Virginia Tech Hokie putting his team in front. Hope he's looking good with a guy like that on that roster. They could use another quarterback right now. 12-6, Hampton on top of Woodside. They go for two. Here is that two-point conversion. Yeah, he's in there. He sneaks it in. Smith with a two-point conversion. 14-6 now. Hampton, things looking a little more normal for Hampton. 14-6 over Woodside. And the Crabbers trying to get back on the board here before we go to halftime. And uh-oh, the option pitch looks like it's going to be a disastrous one. Daz Newsom taking what would be a 10-yard loss to only five to midfield. We go to the third quarter, though, and Woodside now trying to knot things up. Tysheer Tyler looking. Look, oh, no, I'm just going to take off with it this time. 12 yards over the middle, and he's in. 12-yard touchdown run. They go for two. And it will be, here's 12-14, the play action fake throw over the middle. It is Tamir Walker. That two-point conversion is good, and we are knotted at 14. Oh, it's a good one in Newport News. Two elusive quarterbacks with Tyler and Quillen. And here's Quillen now showing off his arm ability, finding Anton Brown 13 yards for the touchdown. The two-point conversion would be no good, but Hampton doesn't care because they're going to give the football back to their running game. And you see the big hit there by D'Angelo Chesson. And then Tamir Walker finishing it off there on Travion Brown. Big time collisions on defense there for Woodside. All right, here we go. More action on the offensive side. That is a straight run, straight up the middle for Kareem Williams. A nine-yard touchdown run. And 26-14. They go in for two. And it is Quillen this time looking. Hot pass in the corner and a great catch by Newsom for the two-point conversion. 28-14, Hampton on top. Ah, uh, the Newsom family, Myron, his dad was an assistant, played football at the next level. Older brother, Dion's at Virginia Tech now, just a talented bloodlines there at Hampton High. Now you see the run there for the touchdown. It's Travion Brown from 17 yards out. And if the two-point conversion worked the first time, Andy, why not do it again with Quillen here, 34-14. to He's going to look for that man again. Newsom with the reception, and Crabbers extend the lead. Quick strike, the, the uh, little screen pass, and Newsom apparently knows how to add two points to every touchdown. Why not give it to him again? Here is Tahir Taylor, though, trying to add some points for Woodside. Throwing back corner, and that is what you call an outstanding catch. Tamir Walker got the two-point conversion catch. This one a touchdown catch, but not enough for Woodside. Here final, 36-20. to 20. Hampton over Woodside. And you see Javon Quillen with a touchdown pass, three rushing scores, Traquan Smith getting it done there with a touchdown grab and touchdown run, while Tyler had 122 yards passing, a touchdown strike through the air, and a touchdown run in defeat. As we move on now, we're going to stay out there near the uh, peninsula of Smithfield, a little bit further south, still out west, Smithfield at Lafayette. And the Rams come in undefeated, Andy, looking to extend their Bay Rivers District winning streak to 26 games. The record is tabbed with 27 straight from 1990 to 1993. A little bit after Terry Kirby played there for the Tigers, and you see right here Smithfield with the ball first. They would get past midfield when they'd be forced to punt, and Hezekiah Grimsley is back there, and uh-oh, he muffs it. The Packers will get on it. Not good for Lafayette there. Drew Baker, it's good for the Packers. They're enjoying that one with a chance to score. A very short field set up off the left punt equals a very short touchdown run for Willie Drew. The one yard plunge and it's seven to nothing. Smithfield on top early. Wow, first year head coach Reginald Chavis and the group from Smithfield trying to spring the upset here. But Lafayette with the 
powerful running game. That's Kyle Johnson out of that wing tee, filling in for the injured, bruisey fullback John Douglas. He's going to take off with a long run there before he's knocked out of bounds. And Lafayette here in business with a chance to score. They'll hand it off again, and this time it'll be Joey Craigenbrink finishing off the drive with a touchdown from seven yards out. Seven yard run from Joey Craigenbrink, and there's two of those on this team. Final right here though, eight to seven, as we move on into later action. Here's the kickoff. That's gonna be recovered by Jaquan Ridley, and Ridley has some room, a little bit of room, and now he's got a lot of room. He's just gonna outrace everybody. Big return for Jaquan Ridley, sets things up. A 54 yarder there, and that allows that Smithfield passing game, which is tops in the Bay Rivers District, to go to work, and there's the completion there from Nick Turner to his target there, wide open with the reception. For the Smithfield Packers, you see they keep marching down the field inside the 15-yard line, and it'll be through the air they go. Turner hitting his open target. That is D. Holden with the touchdown from 14 yards out. Smithfield now in the lead. 14-8. Not quite done yet is Lafayette, though. That is Caleb Craigenbrink on the run down inside the red zone, and he sets up uh, his brother, Joey Craigenbrink. We told you there was two of them. Here's the other one. 25-yard touchdown run. Caleb to Joey Craig and Brink, and there's two of Craig and Brink's uh, Craig and Brink eye. Either way, it's tie game, 14 off. Uh-oh, the Smithfield defense is seeing double trouble here in this one. Now, Lafayette, they have some deadly return men, and there's one of them, Hezekiah Grimsley, redeeming himself for the muff punt. And you're not going to catch Grimsley. He's going all the way to Grandma Grimsley's house with a picnic basket and a touchdown, 87 yards. Lafayette, they score in a hurry. Uh, yeah, I think that makes up for the muff punt. You can drop one, give up a touchdown, just run it back next time you get it. 87 yards. Here is Nick Turner rolling and diving. That will be short. And here is Nick Turner at a shotgun this time. Drops back, looks, throws over the middle. They forgot to cover Chris Pierce. Nine yard touchdown, 21-29 at this point. Getting a little closer. It's a shootout until the Lafayette defense clamps down. And you see right there, it's Tyler Jump forcing the fumble there. It's going to be scooped up. Jack Irwin running it in for the touchdown, and it would be all Rams in the fourth quarter. 28 unanswered points as they turn a tight one into a running clock win. Takes a lot of effort to beat Lafayette. Smithfield had it going early, couldn't quite hold them off in the fourth quarter. But now you see the combination of the Craig and Brinks and Kyle Johnson too much in Beach District action. James Madison commit Cole Johnson throws for two touchdowns. Leading the Cox Falcons to victory 38 to 17 over Kelly. Wilson over Granby, 15 to 14 and a one point nail biter. Cynthia Brown getting it done again. Kudos, three field goals, including the game winner for the Presidents. In the private schools, it is Norfolk Academy, 22 21 over Trinity Episcopal. Michael Frazier with a touchdown run, Tyler Tabor with a score for the Bulldogs as well. When we return, we have some 3A West Region action. Cave Spring and Allegheny. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Cox Sports Report. Welcome back to Sports Report. Andy Michal with Matt Hatfield. And what they say, go west, young man. We're going to go west out to the mountains. We are. It's a 3A West region matchup with the Allegheny Mountaineers at 2-1 overall, taking on the Cave Spring Knights at 0-2. The White Vogel Stadium, the site for this one in Cave Spring in the black. The Allegheny Mountaineers wearing the old sky blue uniforms, white tops. Looks like the Houston Oilers, yeah, you told me, like Andy. The, the old Oilers uniforms here. So we see the special teams action there. That is from Cave Spring in the dark. Here's the punt. Now we told you with punts, you either see something really good or really bad. This is really bad if you have to be wearing white and a fan of Allegheny. The muffed punt retrieved by Cal Reeves. And Cave Spring now with the pass in the flight. It's Jacob Mike, the freshman, hitting Cody Amos, a five yard score there. And Cave Spring on the board. Extra point will be true and you see the kids trying to get the souvenir football but it goes through the oh too bad for them k spring their team's winning those seven to nothing seven to nothing and here goes raekwon kennard straight up the middle nobody's going to catch him except for this guy right there 
almost a touchdown run, still a 56 yard run for Rick Kennard, and that's going to set up Matt Patterson. He just takes it himself this time over the middle into the end zone, and we are knotted up. What well, we could be knotted up, hold on, I don't want to spoil it. Here's the extra point. Oh, it's close, but it's good. Now we're knotted up. Officially 7 7. And that time the kids got the souvenir football. <laughs> Patterson, the junior, so Allegheny fans will watch him for another year beyond this season here. Now Cave Spring on the ensuing kickoff, trying to get themselves good field position again, and they will do so as you see almost near midfield they are. And Coach Tim Fulton has to really appreciate that, helping out his quarterback, who's only a ninth grader here, giving him nice starting spots. Nice starting spot, and here's that quarterback, ninth to Austin Griffith inside the five-yard line. That sets up a very short field, which equals a very short touchdown run. Tyler Rice straight up the middle, driving with the legs. A three-yard touchdown run, 13 to seven. Extra point blocked. And when all else fails there and his back's not there, Matt Patterson will say, I'll take it myself here. 30 yards, diving to the pylon. He's in for the touchdown. Patterson, a dual threat ability, running and throwing it here. And here comes the extra point. Uh, doink. Oh, they got it blocked. That one's blocked by the upright. It's no good. And we are tied at 13 to 13 as we head past halftime now into the second half. It is Patterson on the roll and he finds a receiver. Completion inside the five yard line. Patterson this time, no, I'm not going to throw it. I'm going to run it. He gets into the end zone. A three yard touchdown run, 20 to 13. Allegheny on top. It's a back and forth seesaw affair until Patterson, and there's the senior again, Raekwon Kennard, makes a guy miss, run through, run through a guy, give one a stiff arm, and just take it all the way. 66 yards, not going to stop me today. I'm determined, Kennard says, touchdown for the Mountaineers. Nice dive there at the end. That made it 26-13. Allegheny starting to pull away, and this one will pretty much ice it. Patterson again himself, third touchdown on the day for Patterson, a six-yard run. 33 to 13, that is your final. 26 unanswered points for the Mountaineers. You see Patterson and Kennard, just a deadly combination as they combine Andy for over 250 yards rushing between them. Allegheny moves to three and one, but in the 3A West Division, Liberty Bedford, and look at this one, this is a basketball score. 53 to 50 over Hidden Valley. Nobody brought their defense. So Bedford won it at the end on a three-pointer there. 6A North Region action, Lake Braddock, a 21 to 14 victor over Robinson. Mason Velasquez had two touchdown receptions for the Rams, but Lamont Atkins and Kyle Edwards combining for three scores as the Bruins keep it rolling. And stay with us when we come back. We've got a battle of two unbeaten teams taking place in Chesapeake. Sports Report rolls on right after this. Welcome back to Sports Report alongside Andy Mashaw. I am Matthew Hatfield. We're going to now head to Chesapeake and Andy Mashaw country. Uh, Indian River. We're going to the home of the Braves. They had a legendary career as a receiver at, the, at Indian mean? River. I had exactly zero career touchdowns. Ooh. I did manage to record a half a sack, though. That's not too shabby. The Braves unbeaten. So are the Kingsford Bulldogs. Joe Jones' squad 2-0 as well. And it'll be that tough Indian River defense up front. Oh, they're nasty with Melvin Cotton and Tavante Beckett stopping Debo, that's Deshaun Wellington, but Debo will not be detoured this time as he dives into the end zone, taking the tough hit from Tavante Beckett and scores. Flipped on his head, but he flips on the G. That means he's in the end zone. Seven nothing, Braves down, not for long. Tyree Givers Wilson, and that's a touchdown pass to Devonte Beckett. And look, okay, he's broke my record already. We're two highlights in, and my record is done. We'll get you some Kleenex after the break. As Beckett scores there, the former Oscar Smith Tiger headed to Virginia Tech, now playing both sides of the ball for the Braves. Ryan Cluck rolling to his right, and he will be intercepted by Jaquan Harvey near midfield. And that Braves defense, we told you about it. It's tough. It's opportunistic. They want to keep it rolling. The game is tied at seven still. Givers, Wilson says, no, nah, it's not tied anymore. Outstanding catch by Kieran Best, a 13-yarder, and he fires that into the pylon, the diving grab by Best. It's good, it's better, and it's the best right there as he pulls it in there, the top receiver for Indian River a season ago, and now one of many weapons for head coach Glenwood Fair being his second season at the helm. 
Kings Fork defense now searching for solutions. They got the ball back on offense, though. Uh, not for long. It's Jaquan Yuli bringing down Weathington. He gets the football. Oh, he drops uh, it and gets it again. Uh, two fumble recoveries on the same play. Yuli just trying to pad his own stats at this point. But the Braves take it over. Big defense from the Braves again with the defense. Now the offense has a turn. This was right up the middle. It is Ty Smith, nine yards out. A touchdown run, and it's now 22 to 7. Indian River back on top and starting to pull away a little bit. Bowing to the guys in front of him, paving the way. Those offensive linemen won't get the glory. And Deshaun Wellington, give him some room. He'll take it all the way. Although there's Devin Hunter, the junior free safety, showing why he's one of the top recruits in the country, bringing down Wellington, who's eating 50 yards on the run. And then Wellington will finish it off with a two yard touchdown plunge. Well, they're going to make you earn it, but he does earn it. He finished it off 22 14, getting a little closer. Givers Wilson trying to change it. Over the middle, finds Hunter with a 15 yard catch into the red zone. Go with the Braves. Do it again. Here's Givers Wilson. No, nope, I'm going to keep it this time. Right down the middle off the fake handoff. 19 yard touchdown run. 29 14. Indian River back out in front. Just a beautifully drawn up and well executed option play there. Read option. There's the defense. Melvin Cotton bringing down Ryan Cluck all evening long. This time it'll be the sophomore Darren Bunce punching it in for the score. We've got ourselves an old fashioned shootout. 29 21 going to the break. And here is more defense from the Braves. That is Yuli again. This is a big time sack. This time catches Cluck before he can do anything. And he's not quite done yet. This game is still pretty close. It is 21-36. Trying to get some more momentum going is Kings Fork. And this is momentum going the wrong direction. Yuli again, force fumble, and picks it up and just walks in 22 yards out. And that one hurts. And now 36-21. Oh, the strip by Yuli there, the Alabama commit, and there's Beckett again. Two of the best linebackers you'll find anywhere in Virginia. Now Givers Wilson here rolling to his right. This is his comfort spot right here. Throwing on the move to Beckett. He'll take it in 31 yards for the touchdown. Give him that stiff arm at the end as the Braves are starting to pull away in the fourth and That's final stanza. Second touchdown for Beckett. My records is shattered all over the place with zero touchdowns. Givers Wilson this time with the high snap. Fires over the middle and best. The first one was difficult. That one's pretty easy. There's nobody around him. 31 yard touchdown. Everybody scored touchdowns to me. It's 50 to 21. That is your final Braves take it over Kingsport. The Kingsport defense held a, or offense held to 22 yards in the second half after scoring 21 points. Tyree Givers Wilson producing five touchdowns, four with his arm and one with his legs. Can I say I got a half a sack? I did get a half a sack. You're proud of that, aren't you? I am. <laughs> We've got more action as we move along to Darling Stadium. The Bethel Bruins taking on the Kickatan Warriors. Bethel coming in at one and two. A couple of nail biter losses to Phoebus and Indian River. Kickatan two and one as they try to get their second straight win. And early on, it'll be Lakendra Lowther, the junior quarterback for Bethel. Look at the nifty footwork there for him, running there at the quarterback spot. Yeah, Lowther says, Are you sure he's a quarterback and not a running back? And Dwayne Hudson said, Yep, this is what a running back looks like. 21 yards for the tailback, a touchdown, and it's 7 0. Bethel on top early. Lowther giving his team a spark, but this time it's Kikitan. Uh oh, they got the spark. JC on Fugate, the guy igniting the Warriors in all three phases offense, defense, special teams. He gets a 30 yard pick six. Ensuing kickoff, it is 7 7. This is Justin Davis. Look at the blocking. They had a triple team on some of them. Another good block on the outside. Then he takes off down the sidelines and wham! And I'm not sure who tackled who there, but it's a pretty good return for Justin Davis. And it sets this up. Savage over to Grandy. 14 yards later, he's in the end zone. That's a touchdown. 14 to 7 is the tie, is the score now. Bethel like on top. Josh Awusu with that score, and we'll Awusu. see his other brother, Jeremiah. Later in this, now it's Keith Granny with the kick return pass midfield, giving Kikatan a chance to strike. And Desmond Savage, the quarterback, will go to Grandy again. Why? Because the Grandy man can getting to the end zone 14 yards with the touchdown. Getting closer, 14 13. Here's LeKindrell Lothar. And again, looking like a running back, takes it up the middle for a good sized chunk of yardage. And again, after that, you hand it off to the real running back, and Hudson goes 17 yards for another touchdown. 21-13, what's happening? Bethel's on top. It's another back and forth battle, but Bethel now trying to get some separation as that's a fumble on the ground. Do the Bruins have it? They do. Isaiah Norse picks it up, and now it's John Vasilakopoulos with the field goal. Ooh, glad you drew that one. That field goal is 31 yards. His name is a little bit longer than that. 
Yeah, try spelling it. We might have a spelling bee later to see who can win that contest. Bethel trying to win this contest, and special teams helping out a huge, uh, big way here. You see Justin Davis, look at this return into the 40 yard line. He's been getting it done all night long on special teams. Now it's Lowther dropping back to throw, scrambling, and he's got a man. It's a Wusu again. A Wusu, that was a fourth down play right there. A huge play from Lowther to a Wusu, 27 yards on the touchdown, and a big ensuing kickoff. Jason Fugate. Big interception return, big hole, and uh oh, this is going a long, long ways. The only guys on the screen are the referees. They're not going to tackle him. 91 yard kickoff return for JC on Fugate. And here's a two point conversion. Savage to Edwards, and that is good too. And it's 31 21, 10 point lead. It's getting tight. Kickatan's offense too dangerous to put them away in the third quarter. Savage now alertly picking it up after it hits the ground, and he finds Keith Grandy inside the five yard line, and that will set up. Go to Grandy once, do it twice. A touchdown again for him as the Warriors are making things interesting. They have the ball under a minute to go and a chance to steal the win. Here they go. Can they pull it off? Savage sets back, fires deep down. Uh oh, that's the wrong color jersey. That is a wrong Awosu. That is Jeremiah Awosu. The other Awosu sealing it for Bethel. The Awosai. They say Awosai. They're yelling at him to get down. Don't fumble it. Get down. He does get down, he does not fumble it. There's the final victory knee. The Awosai and Bethel take it 31-27 over Kikatan. Both teams now two and two on the season. You see Fugate with a couple of scores. Keith Graney with two touchdown receptions, but Bethel now regrouping from that 0-2 start to the season as they win it under first year head coach, William Beverly. Here's an out of state matchup. Lake Taylor going to North Carolina, crossing the state lines to take on Northeastern and take down Northeastern, 34-27. Jalen Cuffey with 13 tackles as Hank Sawyer's Titans win their 18th game in a row. Non-district matchup, broad run, 56-21 over Centerville. Centerville was in the 6A state championship a season ago, but Meach Henry, he's too much for them. Five touchdown runs to propel the Spartans. Continuing with the non-district matchup, that is Osborne doubling up Garfield, 60-30. Two touchdowns from Desmond Woodson receiving by Anthony Pearson, four touchdown passes as the Eagles win that one. Here's Magna Vista, a one point nail biter, 40 to 41, another non-defensive game over William Byrd. Well, I'm not sure Jaquez Harrison, Sean McGuire and company have any nails left as that one was a oh. high scoring shootout. The defending 3A champs get it done. And here's our player of the week. It is Braylon Cyphers from Green Run. The running back had 25 carries. 280 yards, it's 280 yards and four touchdowns as the Stallions take down Landstown 30 to seven in kind of a grudge match there. Teams not very far apart. Yeah, it was seven, seven at the half, but the Stallions pull away before they take on Ocean Lakes. Well, we're out of time for Andy Michaud, I'm Matt Hatfield. We'll catch you next time right here on the Cox Sports Report.